الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله ذي الفضل والكرم ذي القدرة والنعم الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أو يو بليف Fear Allah as you should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, grant us this great gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma amina ya arham ar-rahimina amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Tanjil, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم من قبل وأنيب إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصروا الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة الزمر يسألن أس يسرقن أس كمندن أس رمندن أس to go back to him وأنيب إلى ربكم go back to Allah repent to Allah وأسلم له and surrender yourself to him Submit to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Before punishment will come to you, invade you, attack you, befall on you, you don't know in which way it will come, then you'll find no one to help you. وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And follow the path of the best speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to you, the Qur'an, the words of Allah, and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَعْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْتَةً وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Before punishment will come to you, all of a sudden, without you sensing it, noticing it, seeing it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, reminding us, come back to him. Surrender to him. The punishment that is going to come is a reality. It's not a fiction. It is a truth. It's not force. It is something we'll see with all our eyes. It is haqqul yaqeen, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it. Haqqul yaqeen, the truth of the certainty. The highest degree of the certainty. And when it comes that day, someone will say, أَن تَقُولَ نَفْسٌ يَا حَسْرَةَ عَلَى مَا فَرَّتُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ and this is the worst of the regret, when there is no way to repent or an opportunity to go back. Someone will say, Ya Hasrata, great is my grief, great is my regret that I have neglected my life. I have neglected toward the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much I missed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy. A man, he was praying. And while in his praying during the night, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gifted him with this taste of the sweetness of Iman. Allah gifted him with this sweetness that he felt in his heart, that really a glimpse, that really shined in all his soul. And he felt such a joy that no one can have with any money or no one can reach with any desire. And he said in himself, Ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. Rightest man from the Salaf, after having this gift of the sweetness of Iman, to taste it in one of his salat that Allah gifted him after long striving, he say, how much I missed. How much I missed from the joy of this life. How much I missed from the success of this life. How much I missed to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way of the companion. When they hear a hadith of the Prophet, when they hear the hadith that they will reward, like Abdullah ibn Umar, what you heard, what will be the reward for someone who joined a funeral prayer, قال, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
whoever who salli salli janazatan or you salli fi janazah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a qirat a qirat which is the size of Uhud because the Prophet sallallahu said what's the qirat ya Rasulullah what is the reward of the qirat he said it's like the mountain of Uhud then Abdullah ibn Umar in deep sorrow he say how much qirat we have missed how much qirat we have missed how much Good thing that Allah wants to shower you with, one will be an eye mindful that we have missed. How much the sweetness and the joy that no one can have with any money, but is the favor and the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in one of the Arifin from the Salaf, he said, Wallahi illa, law anna al muluk wa abna al muluk, ya'lamuna ma bina, la jaladun alayhi bis suyuf. If they know what we feel, the kings, and the children of the kings, if they know what we have inside from joy, they will come and fight us for it with the sword. And one of the Salaf is saying, call the people of this dunya, they leave this dunya without tasting the more joyful thing in it. They said, what is the most joyful thing in it? They said, it is to be close to Allah, it is to love Allah, it is to know Allah, it is to be gifted with the sweetness of Iman. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he used to say, he said, there's a Jannah in the dunya. There's a true paradise in the Jannah. The one who will not step into this dunya, most likely he will not enter the Jannah of the Akhirah. They said, what is the Jannah? He said, the Jannah of the sweetness of Iman. The Jannah that you have your garden in your heart. And this is when someone thinks, we say, subhanAllah, we have this opportunity. But should we... Do we have the high esteem, which we will do, or do we have the high priority to have the joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gifting us with, but we have to work for it, or our priority is in the dunya, or is our priority into the accumulation, don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said in hadith, he created this dunya for us. And he created us to worship him. Therefore, people are drowning themselves with the worry of the dunya and neglecting the one who created them, who has the storage of the whole dunya, who has everything. He has the rahmah, he has the bounties, he has the greatness, and he has everything you need. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it in his hand. Therefore, people are worrying and running behind the dunya when this dunya should kneel to them because it's been created for them. And we are created to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship him. We are turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, if this worshiper standing in front of Allah and he tastes this joy of the sweetness of Iman that he could not even describe it because only the one who will live and taste it that's the one who will know the meaning of it but we believe that exists Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it and the Prophet sallallahu mentioned it and the Salihin from the companion they told us about it and the Salihin from the Salaf they describe it for us we know that it exists why should not make it as a priority before it comes the time who will say really ya hasrati ala ma farraktu fi jambillah a man dying a man dying he is feeling the intoxication of death <coughs> the heavy breathing of death the agony of death the bitterness in the tongue of death and he's seeing all his life. He remember every sajda he missed. He remember at least we make 12,410 sajda every year. 12,400. How many sajda we did and we were with Allah? 12,410 sajda. We have in every sajda an opportunity to be the joyful person in the whole universe. An old man explodes in tears, in agony of death. His children holding his hand. They say, why, father, you are crying? He said, children, I remember how many sajda I missed in my life. How many sajda that I have opportunity to be the closest to Allah. I did it in heedlessness. I put my head and mindful, and I lift my head totally unmindful. 12,410 sajda, we have the opportunity, at least this is in the obligatory prayer. 
how many of the sajda we invest in, how many of the sajda we have the opportunity to be with Allah. In every sajda, Allah is calling you to shower you with his mercy. But it will come the time in the agony of death, someone, if he missed them, he will say, Ya hasrat ala ma farratu fi jambillah. And this is in the ayah. Ya hasrat in great regret, how much I missed. How much I miss from the rahmah of Allah if I still have the opportunity. But if I miss that opportunity, I will be neglectful of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered me. And in this moment of death, he's in the agony of death, he will see those letters of the Quran that he will look to flip the pages. In every letter he had the opportunity, if he had read them, to have 10 good deeds in every letter. Ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. In every ayah, if he read it with a reflection, he will have increase of knowledge. In every ayah, if he read it with, with even just to recite the words of Allah, he will have joy and happiness. Then he will say, all this time, ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. It's too late. In all our lifetime, in all our lifetime, every night, Every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the lowest heaven. In every night, in all our lifetime. In all, our, Allah will not miss any night. Fi kulli laylah fi sahih A coming down that fit his great majesty without framing or without any distortion of his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala or his names. And he will be calling upon us those who will be snoring, those who will be spending the night busy with the world, fighting Allah, and Allah will be calling them at that time, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرُ لَهُ هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ هَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ فَأَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ If there's anyone who asking forgiveness, I'm here. I'm asking if there's anyone who asking for forgiveness, I'll forgive him. If there's anyone who asking for repentance, I'm here to repent on him. If there's anyone who's imploring anything, who has any request, I'm here to give him. But people, they are worried with the dunya when they sleep, they don't even wake up because they're being burdened with the worries of the dunya. They're being burdened and being tired by running and running and running when what they seek in is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at that moment, you say, Ya hasrata. And we don't want to remind ourselves to say woe to us. Why should we say woe to us when we have the opportunity to make it? When we say woe to us, when you open, just open the Quran, if you look at it as ibadah, why you say we have your hasrata when in every sujood you have the opportunity to say alhamdulillah, it will turn his great favor from, from Allah to you. Why say we should we say your hasrata when we still have the opportunity in the night and every night? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to you come to Allah when he'll come to you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah remind us, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقَّ And the agony of death came with the truth. The agony of death will come. You cannot hide from it. You cannot run from it. You cannot avoid it. You cannot fight it. You cannot defeat it. It's going to come to you, whatever you will be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَاءَتْ it's going to come on that chair. You cannot stop it. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقُ وَشَهِيدٍ And it's being blown in the trumpet, that's in the day of the meeting. And everyone will come with the driver and witness. وَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ and we uncover the cover that you have. You pulled up the cover of the desire you have in front of your heart and in front of your eyes. The cover of this dunya of the temptation, the cover that blinds us, the cover of the race for the accumulation of toys, the cover of trying to solve, solu find solution for all the worries that we should not even get involved in it because it is in the hand of Allah. Today, your vision is so sharp. And then you realize how much you have lost, how much you have missed. Allah created you to shower you with his mercy. 
At that day, he will not even look at us if we are loser. He doesn't even speak to us. And this is the biggest punishment in the hereafter that Allah refused to look at the one who is created him, gave him life, provided him, and he doesn't want to look at him in the day of judgment. As is the greatest bliss in the Jannah, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the worst and the most grievous penalty to be in the hellfire wal billah, and Allah will not look at you. He doesn't want to even talk to you. Allah said, Dear brother, respected sister, this is a reality. This is our truth. We believe in it. As we believe when you look at the sun in the midday. And no one of the other faith they have the type of belief. The Muslim, they have it because they know it's the truth. Read the book of Allah. Just give it a reflection on any language. You'll find that Allah is speaking to you. No one in the universe will dare to say that he knows every leaf that fall from any tree. No one will say it. We have it in the Quran. Only Allah can say that. No one will dare from the wisest people in the whole history of humankind dare to say such a thing. No one will dare to say, I'm the creator of the heaven and the earth. Only Allah. You have the book of the truth. And Allah reminding us, come back to me. He created you to shower you with his mercy. So how can someone comes and he missed so much? And he missed, ya ayyuhal insanu, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Oh mankind, who have deleted you? Who's the one who deceived you from your Lord, the one generous? He want good for you. He want to shower you with his mercy. And you're running. And you'll see the book. Everything is there. But we are the people who 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 are the the people who are the people the even the fact to hold your friend from his clothes to talk to him, say, I want to talk to you, you'll find it in your record. They said, Every bit of thing is mentioned, Ya Wailatana. Woe to us. We don't want to say it because we read it in the Quran. Ya Wailatana. And those who are hanging out with people, they will not help them to come to the prayer. They're hanging out with people, they invite them to do the haram. They invite them to fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the sinners, not with the one who reminds them. Come to Allah. Come join us to halaqa. Come do this. Come remember Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time when he remembered that people that give him a joy in the dunya because they have the toys so he wants to show off with them. يَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِ لَمْ أَتَّخَذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِ عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا and he will say, I wish I took the way of the Prophet as my way. Woe to me, I wish I didn't take so or so as a friend. He led me astray after I saw the clear proof of the Quran. But the shaitan is the shape of the deceiver. But we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to say, Ya Hasrata, Ya Hasrata. We might say it, Ya Hasrata, when you. Give and you strive to find that this man when he's praying and you find the sweetness of Iman said, I wish I will have, I knew that before. You see people when they come to Islam, they're so happy. They want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have so sensitive heart. Why? Because they discover things that they didn't know. And we will look at them like amazed. MashaAllah, they come every day. They come every day because they have the sweetness of Iman that we lost, that we do not have. We will you waiting for the agony of death to say, Ya Hasrata. We will wait why you should not make it our priority. It is need and must be the priority of our life. Must be. One of the abidat, lady worshipper, mentioned by Al Imam Al Jawzi, she used to say, Qalt wallahi law wajattu dunya al mawtu la shtaraituha. Qal wa ma wa li ma thak. Qal tawqan li liqa illah. She said, If I'll find death for sale, I will buy it. They told her why? Because she said, I'm longing to meet Allah. We go to the mall to get things for our needs. It's halal, alhamdulillah. But this lady, she will not wish death because it's not the way of Islam. But she said, if there's death for sale, I will buy it. Imran ibn Hussain, in a state of difficulty, for years, he's on a bed, sick, he cannot even move. 
His friend Mutarraf ibn Abdullah al-Shakhir and his brother, every time they come, they are in tears to see him in this situation, one of the companions of the one Allah ta'ala alayhim. But he's in that situation and he's happy and he's pleased. He's amazed. He say, why are you crying? He had the sweetness of Iman, even though he's laying in a bed, he cannot even move for years. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this for me, I'm happy. They told him, we don't know even sometimes, we are really embarrassed. We don't want to come to you because we know this is, this is an obligation for us, but we don't want to see you in this situation. He said, as you are like this, I'm going to tell you a secret. Don't say the secret till I die. He said, what is the secret? He said, Alhamdulillah, in the sweetness of a man who helped me to be enjoying, not enjoying, but having patience. As Ya'qub alayhi salam qala sabrun jameel, sweet sabr. He said, my secret that I will forbid you to say to anybody unless after I die. He said, and there's people or there's a creation who keep company for me, which give me joy every day. He said, who are these creation? He said, the angels, they come visit me every day. And I'm being joyful listening to their salam and listening to their speech. And this is the sweetness of humanity take you to levels that nothing in the dunya can give it to you. But if you have it as an opportunity or a priority in your life, we'll avoid to come to say at the agony of death, Ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. اللهم ثبتنا على الإيمان وأمتنا على الإسلام أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الغفور الرحيم بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم describing an astonishing, amazing, scary thing in the day of judgment he said the angels will be bringing a ram and this ram will be presenting death and will put in a level that will be seen from the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. And this ram is going to be slaughtered. Even those in the depth of hellfire, they will see it. What is this ram is death. No death. There's no death, there's no end. The hasra and the regret and the grief for the loser, it will be in a way unspeakable even to describe it. And then the Prophet ﷺ recite this ayah. قال وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And warn them, not the day of judgment, the day of regret the day of regret. When everything is settled and they were totally in heedlessness and they come to Allah with no belief, with no action to present, they missed <coughs> the greatest of the thing. Not to do good, they missed the greatness of Allah. They missed the mercy of Allah. They missed the favor of Allah. They missed the kindness of Allah. They missed the love of Allah. They miss all that. That is the punishment. That when you know all this beauty thing that someone missed in his life, that is the big, grievous penalty. That's why one of the Salihin is saying, if we will not have tears because we are longing to meet Allah, and if we do so, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deprive you from seeing him. If you will have tears from fear of hellfire, then Allah will help you and save you from hellfire. If you have tears thinking of the thirst that you will be having in the day of judgment, then Allah will give you to drink. Don't you want in the day of judgment? People they will be given to drink by the Prophet and other by the companion, and you will be given to drink to you by Allah. You will be around the hawl and you see cup that coming to you and you will be given to drink. And you say, who the one who given me to drink? The angel, they say, as Allah said it in Surah Al-Dahar, وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا And their Lord gave them to drink a very pure, sweet drink. May Allah give them the sweetness of Iman in this dunya and the sweetness of the drink in the akhirah. 
اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اللهم اجتنابه اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إن نسألك الشوق إلى لقائك في غير ضراء مضلة ولا فتنة مضلة اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان واجعلنا هداة مهتدين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله